Again, we consider the function g of z is the absolute value of h, z. We have to argue that g has a global minimum, or actually, because of the absolute value signs, we know that the values of g are at least zero. So if we can find, if we can find a root of g, or a zero of g, then we're done, basically. So, if there is a, an x with a g of x equals zero, then this is equivalent with h x is zero. So, if we can find a zero or a root of h, then we're done. Well, we know that h2 is larger than zero, and the limit of x to infinity of hx is the limit of x to infinity of x minus 1 over 6x squared minus 2 third ln x. And we see here that there are two parts in this expression that go to minus infinity. First, we have x minus x squared. x squared will win against x. And also ln x to infinity will go to infinity with a sign minus two third will show that we actually go to minus infinity. So for x large enough, this holds that h will have negative values. Okay. So h2 is larger than 0, and the limit of hx, x2, infinity is smaller than 0. So there is a z star with h z star smaller than 0. So now we have a positive value and a negative value for a differentiable function. Uh, which is also continuous, so the intermediate value theorem implies here, yeah, since h is continuous, we have a positive value and a negative value that there should be on the interval to z star, since z star is larger than 2, there uh, should be an x for which the value of h crosses the zero. So hx is zero. So for this x, we see that hx is zero and also gx is zero. Then we, there we find our minimum. We cannot find it explicitly, but here's an illustration. Again, with Mathematica, we see that there's a value in between 4 and 5 for which the function makes a strict angle. And uh, then we find the absolute minimum.